I, I want we have this exciting offer we want to talk about with FanDuel. So if you're one of our listeners and you go to sportsbook.fanduel.com and you sign up entering the promo code JJ, you can get up to one thousand dollars refunded in site credit if your first bet doesn't win. I just want to talk about that for a second. $1,000 in site credit if your first bet doesn't win. Use our promo code JJ. All you have to do is sign up, you make a deposit, you place a bet, and essentially your first sports book wager on FanDuel is risk-free. To be clear, you have to be 21 or over. Age and location restrictions apply. You can see the full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. But, Tommy, this is probably one of the most exciting things we've done on this podcast. We're going to start talking a little bit about some betting. Yeah, it's good. We're, we can get into it. I mean, this is the beauty of uh, you you not being in these games anymore is we can, we can really start to, you know, look at what's going on in the league and make some predictions. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a few games in a second. I do want to point out on FanDuel, um, there's a ton of different types of bets you can make. Um, You can do spreads, money line, over, under, uh, player props, more than that. Fast withdrawals. uh, FanDuel will pay your winnings in as little as 24 hours. There's three games I want to talk about. We got Boston Charlotte on Monday, Philly, New York on Tuesday, which I may be at that game, and Miami, Brooklyn on Wednesday, which... I know you're going to. I may also be at that game as well. Uh, Boston Charlotte. Charlotte's one of the most intriguing teams in the league to me. Yeah. Well, so Lamelo right now. Lamelo was obviously awesome last year. Are you when you look at his vision? When you look at how he sees the floor for a guy his age, is there a is there a, a comp that you see? Because some of these passes that he makes are absolutely insane. The comp, the comp. It's a little bit like J. Will, White Chocolate, yeah, who I played with in Orlando. Lamelo is probably at this point we can we can comfortably say is going to be a much sort of prolific, more prolific, and uh, you know uh, he's going to win more accolades than J. Will. But J. Will is a great great NBA player. But that's that's sort of what I see the the daring, the risk the risk reward value proposition that he takes literally on a play by play basis is something to behold the confidence and the courage to make those plays it's awesome it's fun yeah. to watch he's one of my favorite players to watch right now in the nba it's interesting so kelly ubre uh who i think we should have on the show at some point he's played great for them so far do you feel like like because of the like it feels like Charlotte, you know, historically has flown under the radar in terms of guys who've had great seasons down there in the last couple of years and just not gotten a lot of attention. Do you think that's going to change? Do you feel like they're just like more of a league pass team now that people are really going to be paying attention to? I definitely think so. Um L- LaMelo gives them uh a level of publicity that they haven't had before. And they've had some great players for that franchise since originally the Bobcats and now renamed as the Hornets. But, you know, he's he's the driving force for any attention they get. They've got a bunch of great players. Borrega's a great coach. I played for him in Orlando. Um, I Again, I really like their team. Ter- Terry Rozier had a, a monster year last year. People couple years ago laughed at that contract that he got when he left Boston that Mitch Kupchak signed him to and he's outplayed that contract and got another contract Um, so you know it's they're going to be they're going to be a really fun team to watch we got Philly New York on Tuesday the garden is the undefeated New York Knicks as the time of the garden is fucking lit right now lit Philly is dealing with some (laughs) internal drama (laughs) I Yet playing so. great, I, I would say so. <laughs> despite despite the fact they blew a, a pretty significant lead last night in Brooklyn, but this is going to be a really interesting game to me. Did you watch the uh, any highlights of the Knicks Boston opener? The I watched. Mo- I watched most of the game. Yeah, most of the second half and all of the overtimes. Um, fantastic to watch. What what they did? Fournier Fournier is is uh, is a great player. He's a shooter. He's a playmaker. It's a different dimension than they had last year. 
you could make the argument they overachieved a little bit last year getting the four seed. If they get the four seed this year, it would be because everybody else is healthy and they played really well. They're they're much more talented than they are last year. Um, and then we got Miami Brooklyn Wednesday. This game is going to be lit. I think we can all agree Miami's offseason moves plus Tyler Hero seemingly making a huge jump this year is going to be interesting in the race for the top seed in the East. I, I think, think Miami so could potentially win the East. And I, so do I, you know, three, three weeks ago, I, I wouldn't have said that they look great. They just, they're just, they, they just fit the team fits. It's a bunch of, I mean, we, we've had a bunch of the guys in the team on the show. Obviously we, we work with Duncan. Um, but even like, you know, the new additions, Kyle, Morris, like they got a PJ, they got a bunch of mean motherfuckers who know how to play and know how to win and have seen every situation you could possibly seen have seen and they 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 know how to uh sort of like like get in where they fit in. And it just seems like all these other teams, whether they have this, you know, the high profile drama or just a lot of new moving parts are figuring things out. It doesn't seem like Miami's figuring everything out. It's sort of like if this team stays healthy you just don't want to. You don't want to see them in a playoff series because these guys have all been there before. Yeah. So th- so they so they win a champ. They were they not win a championship. They they finish second, get to the finals. They win the East in the bubble. Have a little bit of a down year. Some due to injury. Some due to the quick turnaround. Some due to COVID. They go out and they sign three NBA champions in Morris, PJ, and Kyle, and Tyler Hero. Apparently gets jacked over the off season. Guys posting shirtless photos all over the place on his Instagram account. He used to have just the well, skinniest you, frame, well, you, and all of a sudden you brought he's this just, up. You brought this up now like at least three times on the pod. And so next time he comes on, I expect yeah, we're going to talk to him about it. I think it should be the first question. <laughs> I want to know his training program. I really do. Anyways, I Miami to me. Uh, if I'm, as you said, if I'm in the East, I do not want to play against them in a playoff series. I'm really looking forward to both those games in New York. I'm hoping to be at both of those games. It's going to be fantastic atmospheres, uh, super fun. And again, if you want to play some bets on those games, go to sportsbook.fanduel.com. All right, welcome back to another edition of You've Got Mail with Tyrese Halliburton. Tonight, we are also joined by a special guest, Davion Mitchell. Tyrese and Davion, what's up, guys? How are you? Uh, good, I'm good. Let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. Before, before we get to the mailbag, there's a few things that we need to ask. First of all, my understanding is that Davion has an amazing nickname, Off Night, that was... I believe the origin of that story, if, if Tyrese, if you could explain the origin of that story, but I believe the origin of that nickname came from Tyrese. What's honestly crazy is I, I, I read that the other day. <laughs> I didn't know that. I read it the other day and I was like, yeah, you know, it makes sense because I had a couple off nights. I did. I did. I did when we played Baylor in college. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's one of the best. It's one of the best nicknames. I think it fits really well. My favorite part about it is Davion didn't come up with come up with it himself. I love nicknames where people where people don't come up with it themselves. So I appreciate that about the nickname. Wait, so you didn't you didn't give him this nickname? Where did it come from? I didn't get his his either people have I don't know the true answer. It's gotta be Davion, you gotta you gotta provide some yeah, insight on this. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story about that. <clears throat> so the story came from actually we played Tyrese, and Tyrese is a big name. Um, we was all looking forward to playing him because he was like the best player on the team. He kind of did everything. So when we went into the game, it was like we game plan just to stop him. And that game, I mean, we kind of made it hard for him. We kind of put a lot of a lot of a lot of bodies on him. And then he ended up having an off night. And my guy ran back in this and um, Peyton came up with a name. And it was like, hey, he had an off night. That's what we're gonna call you. We're gonna call you off night. And I was like, oh, I'm cool with that. And then it just the name just stuck with me throughout the whole college season, bro. It really is. It really is one of the better nicknames I've heard. Wait, so had you guys met before that game? Because I was going to ask him about your first impression. So that was the mm. first time. That was the first. Were you Were you going at it? Were you talking? Nah, Davy, I don't talk. First of all, and I don't really say anything unless I'm talked to. So no, there wasn't much chirping, but it was definitely a competition. Yeah, I mean, we were competing against each other, but not much talking to it. I, I would say we wasn't talking because throughout the whole game, we was kind of like winning the whole game. So it could have been like, 
I, I feel like I feel like Tyrese couldn't really say anything because like we were like killing them throughout the whole game. I'm not gonna lie. What is we this were, right now? We were. I'm not gonna lie. We were the games we played y'all. We played our best. They did. We they did. We did. We played our best when we played y'all. That's a fact. I saw a great uh, little graphic on Stat Muse Twitter today um, with Dame and Donovan Mitchell's uh, shooting stats when guarded by Davion. Um, what's going through your mind as a rookie, your first two games, and getting matched up against those two guys? Oh, I would say <clears throat> Dame, what was going through my mind is like, don't let him shoot this deep ball. Like, do not let him get going. Um, he was like off throughout the whole game. Like the beginning of the game, he was off. Like he couldn't, he didn't really find a shot throughout the game. So I was like, don't let him hit this deep ball so he can get going. And this makes him harder to guard. <clears throat> and as far as I mean, guarding <clears throat> Donovan, I mean, he's just like a strong, faster, get downhill guy. The type of guys I, I like guarding. I love guarding guys that you love off the ISOs, off the balance. I I, I love guarding those people because I can like people also my teammates loaded up. Like throughout the whole game, you see my teammates. Loaded up, but guarding guys like Steph would probably be a challenge for me because Tyrese knows off ball is kind of not like my best, my best thing. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be a challenge for me. <laughs> I want to ask you about Steph in a second. Uh, in terms of where you're at right now defensively and picking up sort of uh, game plan stuff and schemes, how much are you relying on instinct and your own sort of natural ability versus? Um, sort of relying on scouting reports and and whatever the the scheme is that night. Relying on it heavy. I mean, it's kind of because throughout the game, you're not really thinking about. It. Like I know last night as we was playing, I was guarding down. I wasn't thinking about yo. He likes going right. It was kind of like I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do what I have to do to stay in front of him. It wasn't really like like the scouting reports. He's heavy, drive right, make him go left. You know what I'm saying so. It was like. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just kind of like relying on my instincts and just trying to stay in front of them throughout that game. Terry's, what were you thinking? What were you thinking when you were sort of watching this? Because we've talked with you a bunch on the show about your adjustment last year to the, you know, just to the league versus even the high level in, in college. So like when you're watching him, you know, D these guys up who you've had to guard a lot, what are you thinking? Uh, well, for, I mean, I, I, it's, it's an enjoyment to watch, like just loving the game of basketball to see two guys go at it, no matter who it is. Uh, my biggest thing defensively is not trying to get stuck and watching the one-on-one -on -one game because next thing you know, like my guy back cuts got a layup. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to stay as engaged as possible, show hands as best as possible because I know, you know, more than likely D's going to be able to stay in front, you know, the majority of the time. So, you know, for me, it's like when there's two seconds and I'm close to him and dudes get turned his back to the basket, go double with high hands or whatever the case may be. Uh, cause I, I have faith that Davey, I was going to keep him in, in front for the majority of the time. I, uh, I've, I've said this before on the podcast, but guarding Kobe Bryant was sort of an exercise in, in futility. Like there was nothing you could do defensively to stop him. He was either going to make the shot or miss the shot. He had a counter to every counter. I feel as if Kevin Durant is sort of the modern version of Kobe. There's not a whole lot you can do to stop him. He's got the handle. He's got the jumper. He's got everything he can do. Um, so besides Kevin, is there a harder player in the league to guard right now than Steph Curry? I would put him, if 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 Kevin is one, Steph has got to be 1A. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling with that statement for sure. I'm rolling with that statement. Um, I think what makes Steph so hard is, I don't know if we've ever, the game has ever seen anybody who, who can move off the ball like this. I mean, you know, from playing in the league, like his conditioning is unbelievable. It's almost like when he gets rid of the ball, he's like a bigger threat, which isn't the case for a lot of people. It's the case for a lot of, you know, yourself, Duncan, shooters like that. But when you, you know, Steph's got a little bit more of a handle than, than, than you guys. So that makes him tough, tough as well. But I would definitely say uh, he's got to be 1A. T Tyrese, to be clear, I'm not a threat at all right now. <laughs> that's a fact that's a fact i am a threat to chunk an eight iron from 150 out that is that is what i'm a threat can, to do wait right can now. i ask can i ask a question jj really for three of you about steph uh for a second so his trainer came out today and was talking about their uh 
their practice routine. And basically, he's I'm paraphrasing, but he said that when Steph shoots, if he doesn't swish, they consider it to be a miss. Um, is this a is this a common? Can you shed some light on this as a as a training technique? Um, and is, is this something you've had to do? And is this something that is a common thing? No, no, Steph. Steph is a psycho for that. To be clear, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> Steph is Patrick Bateman for that. <laughs> I, 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 I believe in good misses and bad misses, and both of you guys can attest to this. There's times where you're shooting the ball really well, and it, every shot, it's back of the rim, it comes back to you, or it swishes, and even the misses feel good. There's also bad makes. So I always, I always judged a shooting workout or even sometimes a, a game, not necessarily on the makes and the misses, but on how it felt. I don't know if you guys have experienced that ever because Tyrese is a fucked up shot. Um, <laughs> but but I, I always felt like if I was shooting the ball well, it felt good, no matter what the result was, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel, I feel that. I feel that. I I think it'd be a lot for me to do that because I like making shots. And so to kind of get punished for making shots would frustrate me very much. But uh, I mean, it's no surprise it, it, when you do stuff like that. It's no surprise as to how he does what he does in the game. Davion, have you seen Tyrese jump on a three pointer yet? I, I bring this up every time, but I'm just curious. Has he, is he practicing? I, I need some behind the scenes action on this. It's funny because um, sometimes he would do it and sometimes he wouldn't. You'd be like, I, I always wonder why sometimes he would jump and they're like, and most of the time he doesn't jump. I'm like, why did he jump? He don't even shoot like that. But I never ask him. I mean, it, it goes in and that's all that matters. <laughs> all right, for Davion, from your perspective, tomorrow, tomorrow you're playing against Steph. What what's going through your head tonight? What are you thinking about? Where's your sort of uh, radar at and alert at for for guarding him? Well, I got to be in my best, the best shape of my life tomorrow. I know that. I mean, because just watching him, especially like the Clippers games, like I didn't see him stop moving throughout that whole game. It was like when he was passing, he was always moving, setting screens, getting someone else open. They were getting layups and and, and he was just getting wide open threes. I'm like, man, like, I don't know how what I'm going to do. So I think for me, it's just like I, I think we got our game plan is, is a, a really good game plan for him. Um, I mean, because we got a lot of guards I can switch and guard, so I'll, I'm not really too worried about. It. I'm not going to be the only one guarding them. Um, there's an there's an uh, an obvious comparison, Davion, between you and Donovan Mitchell, that started. I I mean, the first time I heard it was uh, about eight eight or nine months ago. Um, how do you how do you sort of view that comparison, and is that, in fairness to you, a lot to live up to? Um, yeah, I mean, especially cause like, he's, he's like one of my favorite players. Um, like even in college, I was kind of the reason why I had number four, I had number 45. He was a guy I loved to watch. Um, I wanted to play just like him. And I mean, I kind of lived up to that. And I think throughout the college season, um, you see Damian Lillard said, Hey, you got a little brother out there. I mean, it's funny because like I watching the videos and watching him in college, he kind of, it's completely different games. You know what I'm saying? Like, in college, he was like athletic, like a lob threat, like that type of guy. And then when he gets to the league, he got handles. He can do everything. He was like a – he was known like a defender in college. And in college, that's what I'm known for. So it was like – it was it was funny. I mean, just to have those comparisons. And we got the same last name. Our birthday's in September. It's it's, it's so weird. But um, it was it's definitely a, a, a great name to live up to. I want to ask you both, and Tommy, I want you to chime in here as well. A big topic of discussion around the NBA this week was the NBA top 75 list that was uh, was released in three parts, which was super weird, but that's a whole other discussion. If you guys could each, without taking a player off, I don't want to knock any player, but if you guys could each name one player that you think should have been on that top 75 list, who would that be? Davion, let's start with you. Clay Thompson. Boom. Clay Thompson, 100%. He's a, he's a guy that doesn't need to dribble the ball. Um, he can dribble the ball. He can make plays. He can shoot with the best of them. So I don't see why he didn't make the list, to be honest. All right, Tyrese? Do, uh, Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Got to be Dwight. 
He's, I mean, accolade wise, he's one of the best bigs to ever play the game. At one point, I I really think that he was like in MVP discussions with LeBron in the same year, right? Like going toe to toe with LeBron and and Kobe for MVP, and he's got the same accolades as a lot of dudes on that list. So I'm saying Dwight Howard. Were you surprised, JJ? I ha- I have a name, but I'm 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 questioning whether you were surprised he wasn't on it. I was shocked. As a I was as someone who played with him at the peak. People forget how good Dwight Howard's prime was. Some of it is because of the perception around his personality, how things turned out with the Lakers, then Houston, then Charlotte. Um, And he's now turned himself into a very valuable role player. But Dwight was eight times all NBA. In 2011, LeBron's first year in Miami, Dwight was second in the MVP voting to Derrick Rose. Honestly, by all advanced metrics, he should have been MVP that year. Um, I don't even – is there any other MVP? I, Derek Rose was not on there. Jokic was not on there. I was going to say Rose and Jokic. Rose was going to be mine. And yeah. you, I, could, I, I can understand why he's not on there, but – His peak – His peak. I don't think his peak was long enough, where Dwight's peak was long enough. The other thing I would say is this is something that we, we need to sort of uh, address, and that's – that the top 75 list is based on historical context. So I watched the other day, I watched some film of Dolph Shays. Dolph Shays never shot more than 40% from the field. He was a sharpshooter back in the day. He shot 38% from the field every fucking year. And you're telling me that Kyrie Irving or T-Mac or Vince Carter weren't better basketball players than Dolph Shays? Fuck no. They were better basketball players than Dolph Shays. But... In the context of his era, he was one of the greatest players ever. And so I think it's important to note that. Like Kyrie Irving is easily one of the 75 most skilled basketball players ever. But given the context of, you know, whether it's Dolph Shays or uh, Bill Russell or uh, Dave Debeshare from from, uh, the Knicks, like, you know, when he won a championship with the Knicks in 71, there, there's just so many things that have happened in the course of 75 years that we we have to at least acknowledge and account and commend what these old heads did. And that's fine. But I, honestly, like Kevin Love is better than probably 99% of the power forwards that made that list. <laughs> that's yeah, a fact. Sure. That's fair. The only other two I was going to bring up before we go to the mailbag and I'm I'm not even arguing for them as much as it's a question is Ginobili and Tony Parker and if yeah. the champ if the championships mean anything in terms of uh you know being a, a part of one of these lists. I think they're in the same sort of Tyrese, you can chime in here, but I, I think they're the sort of in the same bucket as Clay, where so much of their uh accolades and recognition are based on team success. I personally was shocked that neither one of them made the top 75 list, to be honest, um, meaning Manu and Tony. But I, I, I do think they they and Clay and a number of other guys benefited from their team success. Whereas, you know, Kyrie's won a championship, but Kyrie sort of is is all about the individual greatness. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of dudes left off. And, you know, I think the majority of the people who are watching the game today or – have voices, uh, you know, have, have, you know, recency uh, bias. But I, I do think that, you know, guys like T-Mac, Vince Carter, Kyrie, Clay, Dwight, I think those are all automatic locks for me. Um, but, you know, like you said, it's, it's about the historical context. So I understand it's not an easy decision to make. And I, I think it's hard to make, there's no way they were going to make a top 75 list and somebody not be mad. So, uh, you know, See, top 76 internet. list, yeah. top 76, 76 list, My bad. The, <laughs> but it's 76 players. It's the internet. People are always mad. We, that is I actually fact. have, Everybody's... I have one more question for Davion, uh, before we get to the mailbag and it's just sort of his perspective as a rookie coming into the league, but also be, you know, being a basketball fan during the social media era and the NBA it just seems like has constant drama, whether it's the Ben situation, the Kyrie situation last night, AD and Dwight getting into it. And I just sort of wanted to gauge your awareness of the pettiness and the drama that occurs in the NBA, basically on a daily basis. 
Yeah, it's been um, it's been crazy. I mean, especially because <clears throat> they still talk about Ben Simmons today and basketball is going on. Like, there's so many games going on. They're still talking about Ben Simmons. I was like, man, like, leave this man alone. But it's just crazy to see that 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 how much the social media does to just the players in the NBA, especially guys like Ben Simmons. I mean, we all know the situation with him, but and also like the the social media stuff with the Lakers. Like, like let these teams like. Let this team figure it out. Why? Why social media got to post the Lakers? I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that they posted them, them fighting and just building up more drama. But I mean, that's just the world we live in today. So drama sells. Guys, don't read. Don't read the comments after games, good or bad. Don't read them. I read them just to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy. Let's get to this mailbag. All right. So Ralph, this is good for Tyrese. Ralph writes in from uh, Fresno. What NBA player would be the most electric in the WWE? That's a Tyrese. great question. And this, I'm is, trying, this, this question was made for Tyrese. <laughs> it is not. I got I to gotta, I gotta digest the question because it's somebody with a lot of uh, – who's got like a lot of flavor, like a lot of – who's like, man, I don't know. Somebody who makes a lot of – has a lot of quotable stuff in post-game pressers. Who is that? I would say I would say on the court performance wise, for me, the first name that pops in my head is Lance Stevenson. He'd be fire. He'd be fire. <laughs> He'd be so good. <laughs> That's a fact. What about but what it, about it, Westbrook? It, Westbrook? Ooh. Westbrook's the answer, but I'm <laughs> this is the Tommy this is Tommy's favorite answer. In terms of performance in the ring, Drew Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tommy's dream answer right there. Drew Holiday. That's my answer. To sneak Drew in somehow. Davion, do you have anyone? I like when, when y'all said Russell Westbrook. I think Russell Westbrook would be, in terms of performance, I think it would be Russell Westbrook for real. Did you go with Tyrese the other night to the thing? Yeah, I went with him. How was it? Was it embarrassing because he was freaking out so much? It, it was cool. It, it was cool. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a great experience. Uh, I've never been that close, so it was fun, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this guy's name up again, by the way. I actually think there's a better than 50% chance that Dwight Howard Dwight. does some oh. form of professional wrestling post-career. Yes, Dwight would be nice. He That's is a made for it. He's That's made for it. Yeah, Dwight would actually be, Dwight might be number one. Size and everything, yeah. And and he's, he, he you know, he, he, he engages, he, he loves to act. That's a great answer. It's a great it's perfect answer. perfect for him. Um, all right, Michael Kirk writes in, what was your guilty pleasure pop song growing up? Uh, well, my honest answer, I grew up in an era of, uh, of, of, of Bieber haters, uh, you know, right. You know, baby was like the most disliked song in YouTube, like history. Uh, but something by Bieber, I probably, uh, probably baby, probably baby. I'd be like at school, like, oh, Justin Bieber sucks. Right. To the girls and stuff. Cause it was like the cool thing to do, like get home and sing it. So something by Bieber, anything by Bieber. That's my answer. You know, it's funny that I had a um, a different podcast that I did or interview that I did. Someone asked the same question and I said, Justin Bieber. Um, Justin Bieber is definitely a guy that I used to always listen to like one time and all that stuff. Yeah. Facts. Definitely Bieber. <laughs> Tommy, these guys were born in the early 2000s. Well, you know, whatever. Late 90s. Is there is there a song from that era? Let's call it 98 to 2002. That is a guilty pleasure for you, Tommy. I don't know what I don't know what year it came out, but do you know Vanessa Carlton, A Thousand Miles? A Thousand Miles. That song is a <laughs> great, great that. song. I don't know. What, I, we can look up afterwards what song. Came, but I would say that's a guilty pleasure. I mean, that's a good karaoke song. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. What, what's yours? Like, um, what's, um, J, JJ's era's... Genie in a Bottle. I was going to say JJ's era's, era's like... Genie in a Bottle. Led Zeppelin, <laughs> Rolling Stones. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, Genie in a Bottle. Christina Aguilera, for sure. For sure. Christina that Aguilera is classic. Yeah, that's that classic. was a banger. That was a banger. Um, okay, this is a good basketball question uh, for for all you guys. Malcolm and Charlotte, what's the thing about playing good defense? Uh, casual fans do not realize. Davion, I feel like you should take mm. that one first. How much effort you got to put into it? Like, it's so much effort. I mean, just to especially because how good these players are in the NBA, how skilled they are. Um, like it's it's hard to just stop someone. Like I feel like going to guarding these players, you're not gonna go in stopping anyone. Like you just gotta go in there slowing people down. People don't realize like just because you're a good defender doesn't mean you're gonna stop 
anyone. Like, it's just, it's just not possible. These guys are too good. But you can slow them down, and it's a lot of effort for sure. My answer would be the game within the game, uh, you know, with, like, using your hands, like, bumping them when the ref's not looking, like, little stuff like that uh, that I think good defend- great defenders do uh, to, to, to get you off your stuff, saying something under your breath or anything like that to get – just to get just to get going at, at the good players. I think that's the, the part of it that, that they don't really see. I can't really chime in on this one. Um, <laughs> so. But I will say one thing to the casuals and mainly any aggregate highlight account on Instagram or Twitter. When a guy crosses over, basically changes the ball from his right hand to his left hand or his left hand to a right hand on an ice and the ju- the defender jumps because the big calls an ice and they call it a crossover, that shit drives me fucking crazy. That drives me crazy. <laughs> That is, that is such a casual reaction to a normal defensive coverage. If the timing is right, it happens once or twice a game. You got the ball in your left hand on the right side. The big call is an ice. You put it in your right hand at the exact moment that the guy jumps to ice the pick down to the baseline. And it annoys the shit out of me when I see these highlights on social media. They're like, so-and-so cross so-and-so. And you're like, nah, it was just an ice. That's that's my sort of answer roundabout to that question. That's a great answer right there. Thanks. Yeah, that was a good that was a good little rant. You know what grinds JJ's gears? <laughs> you know what grinds my gears? <laughs> <laughs> when somebody jumps in the ice. Philip from Washington. What's one food you hate that everybody else likes? Cheese. Yeah, that's a che- fat. Cheese? What? Cheese? <laughs> All cheese? Are you are you lactose yeah. intolerant or you just don't like it? I just don't like it. I just don't like the taste. Like Tyrese is on me all the time about it. Like I don't understand. I, I don't understand how everyone. Imagine likes going it. to a burger spot and saying, "Yo, let me get a hamburger." <laughs> a hamburger? <laughs> no cheese? Oh, that's crazy. No cheese. <laughs> Do you eat I pizza? Think, Do you? Nah, not like that. Unless I like, I'm real hungry. But I would tell them like really light cheese and light sauce, <laughs> and uh, extra bacon and extra pepperoni because I can't taste that cheese. That's a good one. Tyrese, what's yours? It used to be guacamole, but I, I really was just kind of scared to eat it. But now, now I got a chef, so I, I, I started eating avocado and guacamole. It's all right. But I think my answer would be like, I, I don't really know. Let's just say like, I don't know, mustard. I can't do mustard on anything. No. Let's just say that. Tommy, who asked that question? Philip from Washington. Is that a real person, or did you write that question? I wrote. I, it's a, it, I didn't write. It's a real person. They emailed it. Every single one of these questions have been emailed in, or texted in, or tweeted in. All right. Why? I believe you. I believe What's you. What's yours? What's yours? I mean, I've talked about this a bunch, but obviously, <clears throat> tomatoes don't belong on sandwiches. Tomatoes. That's a great I, answer. Don't, they don't but, belong on sandwiches. But do you I hate do like tomatoes? To, so they don't count. Then that's not an answer. Hold on. My answer is mushrooms. I hate fucking mushrooms. But tomatoes definitely don't belong on, on sandwiches. Great answers. Interesting. Even a BLT. Even a BLT. Make it a BLA. I think that's you know, it. bacon, lettuce, avocado. Make it just a like, BLA. I think I just like you tomato. need just like you need cheese on a burger, you need tomatoes on a burger too. Definitely don't need cheese on a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool off the cheese. What's your feeling? What's your guys feeling on mayo? That's mine. Oh no. Oh, geez. No, nah, yeah, I'm cool. No, right. Yeah, I'm rock- the, mayo's I no, no. sam- Mayo's a sandwich ruiner. Mayo's I I'll trip it. Yeah. Mayo's a sandwich maker. Oh, I don't do ranch. I don't do ranch. That's a good one. I should yeah. my answer. I don't think ranch is popular enough. Like I don't think I think a lot of people don't like ranch. So I feel like that's I feel like that is mustard is more is a better answer. Okay, this is in honor of Davion. Terrence in Tennessee. David, you could probably answer this, but it's gonna be harder because you've only played two games. So it's probably for you guys for the two of you guys. Who's the most annoying defender you ever faced? I guess you can answer it maybe in college. For me, Marcus Garrett. Marcus Garrett from Kansas, the most annoying defender I ever went against. And a lot of my teammates would say that, too. He's like he got his hand on every like every time he would dribble, his hand would just touch the ball. And I would never understand that, like dribbling the ball. Like he would do that to so many of our guards on the team. Like his hand would just be on the ball and he would like get deflections. Like he he was definitely the most annoying defender. Davion Mitchell. <laughs> Way to give love to your teammate, man. 
<laughs> fucking great teammate. You're a great yeah. teammate. I want to pull that video of the, the, your guys' game in college. I feel like... <laughs> I feel, I feel like we kind of skated over the fact that Davion got on here and it was like we washed them every time we played. <laughs> we only played twice, so stop it. So stop it. So, yeah. so, yeah. I'm gonna give a shout out. I'm gonna give a shout out to Jackie Manuel from UNC, who who always guarded me pretty well when I played at Duke. I also like to shout out Tony Allen, and I've told this story before, but at my fourth year, we were playing the Celtics in the conference finals, and. I was hooping and I checked in. I can't remember. I think it was game five at home. And I checked in in the first quarter and it was a free throw. And I walked in the game. I'm behind the three point line, hands on my knees. Somebody's shooting a free throw. Tony simultaneously checks in and he walks over to me and he just starts breathing on me. <sighs> like that like he's it's sort of like the lance stevenson blowing in someone's ear type thing but it I, and i just i looked at him and i said are you are you good are you good and i kind of sidestepped but he was he was he would talk about somebody just looking for an edge on every play he was so good at that what tyrese was talking about earlier what makes a great defender he knew everything he knew every trick um, so I think for the NBA guys, I'd probably say him. Molly from Portland, last movie you cried watching. Ooh. Wow. Baby, y'all? <laughs> I, I don't cry. I don't cry, so I can't answer that one. <laughs> You're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really haven't cried watching the movie. Oh, man. Terry's is a cry, cry watching every movie. <laughs> no, I, I, I knew his answer was going to be I don't cry because that doesn't surprise me. He probably doesn't cry. Man, uh, hard, hardball. Oh, I cry. Uh, yeah, definitely. Hardball. Like, I've I've seen that movie so many times, so many times in my life. And the other day, I was just watching it with my girl, and G Baby died, and I was like, "Oh, spoiler, bro!" I was like, "Yo, what's going on right now?" <laughs> <Spoiler. I'm> just, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So that's my answer. Hardball, Tommy. That's a, that's a good I one. think you've talked about this before, but the phenomenon of crying on airplanes—it's a very real thing. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I, I've traveled a bit over the last 10 days. I had a back and forth from New York to Cabo, Cabo to New York, then New York to San Fran, San Fran back to New York. And I watched a lot of movies, I'm not going to lie. And for some reason, I cried in The Big Lebowski. I have no idea why. <laughs> but That's weird. I cried when that they is, were, they were throwing is... the ashes in the ocean. I don't know why. Have you guys seen I The Big Lebowski? I was emotionally invested in the movie. No. Mm. I've never seen it. It's not spoiler. It's not a sad movie. It's like it's, <laughs> it's not, not. It's not a fun. movie that you should cry. <laughs> okay, uh, Nile from Fort Worth. Who uh, non Kings have you been impressed by in the first two games that we've played against, or just in the NBA? No, no, no. Just that you've seen, not that you played against. Lamelo Ball. Yeah, he's been he's been killing. Um, I didn't know he could shoot it that well. But he's been hitting the three ball deep, and he's been running that team real well. Chris Duarte from the Pacers. Mm. He's been balling. He's been balling. Yeah. I didn't, and I mean, I didn't really watch much of him. And then they got to tournament. Oregon's playing pretty good, so I was like, oh, he's 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 pretty nice. But definitely wasn't expecting this. So it's uh, it's nice. He, he he looks nice. All right, Tommy. Uh, I hate to say I, this. I'm wa I'm waiting for it because I was going to bring it up if you didn't say it. But I have been impressed by the Chicago Bulls. I've been impressed Sorry. by them. Now, I want to put into some sort of context <laughs> Thank you. that they've beaten the Cavs and the Pelicans. So let's put that into context. But it looks like a team that has great chemistry and is having fun. What makes, I think what makes their offseason moves so good, which you called back in August, is Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan are elite shot creators. And Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso are great defenders. And there's a yin and, yin and yang there, and they, they, they all complement each other. And so much of the NBA is about fit and how you can complement and make your teammates better. And I think those four guys are doing that. And I, I'm impressed by the Bulls. 
early. There's Thank 80 you. more games. I'm not saying they're going to win the East like you I'm, said back in August, but it's early. I didn't say, they, take, gonna, I didn't say they were going to win the East. <laughs> That's great. Whatever. Can we shout out uh, our boy Patty Mills for a second? I don't think he's missed the three yet. He's like he's like nine for nine or ten for ten or something like that. He's the one. I mean, he's not. It's not a surprise, but uh, it's another guy that's had a had a good start. Um, we got two more. Uh, Tyler from Nashville, favorite Sunday night uh, HBO show ever. Do you do you have any favorite shows HBO shows, Davion? What does that mean? Yeah, like like, the, sh- like it means a show that was on HBO. Succession. Yeah. Sopranos. En- Entourage. The Wire. Yeah. I honestly don't think me or Davion are gonna have an answer for this. I Yo, know. we gotta get you guys watching. This is actually a shows. better. This is a better answer than I was. Uh, I was hoping for the fact that you guys don't don't have any sort of connection to HBO Sunday night shows. Yeah. is phenomenal. Sunday Game of Thrones. Did you watch Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. I, I have not watch. watched it yet. I've been pressured that I need to watch it, but I have not yet. This is the perfect answer. This is the perfect answer. Wait, Davion, do you, you? Thank you, Davion. Do you have a? What's your favorite TV show? Probably Prison Break. Oh, that's a good Ooh. one. Prison Break's my wow. favorite. That's yeah. a really good one. By the way, I haven't talked to either of you guys about Squid Game or you season three. I haven't talked to either of you guys about it. Are, are we I only watched we need, the, a, we need a whole we need a whole thing on Squid Game at some point. Yeah. Did you finish you yet? I only watched the first first yeah, episode I, of it. I finished season three, yeah. That shows that shows a lot to deal with. Yeah, it is. All right, Tommy. Last last mailbag question. Where are we at? Um for everybody, what player all time from uh, Jason in Sacramento? Sac- shout out to Sacramento. What player all time would you most want to play one on one? I, I can I answer that first. Do you mind if I answer that first? I'd want to play Dolph Shays first, <laughs> so I could beat his ass and be on the top seventy five list. <laughs> Just I knew that roast, was gonna be his answer. Just roast bro. Dolph Shays. I knew that was gonna be his answer. Oh, <laughs> guys, man. poor guy is just taking bullets left and right on this podcast tonight. <laughs> oh my god, so bad. Whoa. All right, Davion. Um, I would probably say <clears throat> I would probably want to play Allen Iverson. I think just because um. Just because he's like a dog, like I, I just want to go against, like compete against him. Um, he can handle the ball, like he's he's just a dog. I want to I want to play one on one him to see what his his mind is like for sure. That'd be a fun. That would be a fun matchup. My answer would be like yeah, like Pistol Pete or something. Somebody who was like stupid <laughs> nice and stupid creative, but like how is he stacking up against like the young guns of today? That's what I want to know. So. Pistol P, if he could teach me that one, that wrist pass he's got. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? This one, he flicks it back. Ah, I need that. I need that. What about Bob Cousy? Yeah, him too. Him too. Him too. Yeah. I know we've shitted on some of the old guys tonight, and again, I try to provide some sort of we. Who is we? Who is we? (laughs) Mainly me. Mainly me. I've provide. I've I've tried to provide some sort of uh, middle ground where I acknowledge their greatness in their era that that can't be denied but one of my favorite things that any nba player has ever said is when austin rivers said that if he played against bob cousy he would be a hall of famer because he's not wrong <laughs> he's not wrong <laughs> what a i forget did it did somebody ask austin him or did he bring wrong. did he someone ask him or did he just bring that up out of nowhere I'm sure it was discussing this sort of thing, but whatever. I think here's my issue with the old timers when they shit on us. We couldn't play in their era. Um, blah blah blah. I, I I would I would say this, and I will stand by this. I don't even think this is a hot take. I just will stand by this. Most NBA players in today's era could play in any era in the NBA. Most NBA play, players from the 50s, 60s, early 70s could not play in today's NBA. That's, I think that's reality. And that's, look, of course you have Oscar Robinson, Jerry, Re- Jerry West, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, go down the line. The top 10 or so players from that era, but the, the talent from one to 450 right now is through the roof. It's through the roof. 
there i'm done that's my that's my last rant for the night yeah this is just you know, it's hard to argue though, you're not wrong. Gears. Old heads. <laughs> <laughs> Old heads grind his gears. I don't want, by the way, Tyrese and Davion, I don't want to be the guy 10 years from now or 20 years from now being that curmudgeon that's shitting on players in 2044. I just, I recognize the game always evolves. A game always evolves. And I watch these, these highlight tapes of these kids that are like 12 and their handles are Kyrie's handles and they're hitting step back threes. And I'm like, the game in 10, 20 years will look completely different. The skill sets will look completely different. And guess what? They'll be better. They'll be better than we were. That's just reality. That's how the game works. It evolves. It gets better. Fact. All right. Uh, Both of you, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Tyrese, we'll see you for episode three of You've Got Mail very soon. Davion, thanks for joining us. Good luck with stuff tomorrow night. I appreciate y'all. See you guys.